Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. My next interview is my first interview for the Toronto International Film Festival this year for 2016. I'm going to have quite a few of them coming live uh, over the next couple of weeks, September 8th to the 18th. This one is with Peter Vaklav. He's a Czechoslovakian filmmaker, and this is his film, We Are Never Alone, that we're talking about. Uh, it's a North American premiere, September the 8th at 5.30 p.m., coming up very soon. It's a very... Uh, interesting, uh, at times difficult and dark film. It's ironic. It's uh, there is a sense of humor to this film, and this movie is about uh, about being human. It's it's uh, it's about unrequited love and about anger and hate and broken relationships. It talks about issues of addiction and despair, and there are so many things that that bubble to the surface in this film. And it 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 looks dark and bleak uh, on the surface, but ultimately, as as Peter will say, this really is as he he says he's an optimist. This is a film about about hope hope and about the future and about what's next. So I hope you enjoy the interview. I hope you enjoy the film. We are never alone. Uh, Thursday, December the, September the 8th, North American premiere at TIFF. And please do stay tuned for more interviews uh, coming your way in the very near future here on Face to Face. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We are joined by a very special guest today, uh, a filmmaker by the name of Peter Vaklav, who is a uh, recently directed uh, a film and written a film called We Are Never Alone, and I'm pretty sure Peter is joining us all the way from Paris today. Peter, thank you for your time. Hello. So, Peter, the the film is going to uh, air at the Toronto International Film Festival, and I believe premiered in Berlin. Is that correct? Is it exact? Can you can you tell us a Started little? in Berlin, yeah. Yeah, can can you tell me a little bit about the reaction to the film? Uh, I've tried not to read any reviews. I've just recently watched the film myself, and I certainly have my own uh, take. And I'm I'm eager to ask you a few questions. But but could you tell me a little bit about the the response? Well, the first response in Berlin was pretty good, and uh, people were laughing and. Uh, and they were they were also a little bit terrorized by the film, but uh, it went pretty well. We had a um, uh, prize of of the public in Berlin, and it was it was pretty well. Then in Czech Republic, it was different because uh, the film was seen by by a lot of critics and by the people like a very critical, uh, a little bit even um, like. Uh, uh, we hearing some uh, some uh, bad feelings against uh, you know, the Czech people and Czech uh, Czech state. So um, they felt that uh, for a lot of people the film is very critical. So I was surprised, and I re- I really felt that the, all also we, we showed the film in Paris, and I saw as how you know the people um, abroad and people in Czech Republic have. Um, takes uh, differently this film. So, so in a sense, I guess you're saying che- the Czechoslovakian uh, audience felt like you were criticizing them personally or, or, or the system uh, or the political system of, of Czechoslovakia personally rather than, say, making a comment kind of about humanity at, at large. Yeah, yes, I think that in abroad the, the people are looking for the story for, for, for you know, the, the, these people which are in a film about the story, about the, you know, about also the artistic side of the film. In Czech Republic, too, of course, but, um, you know, it's, the, 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 they feel that the, the subject is much more closer, and somehow they, they feel like uh, kept in, in this subject and like, uh, like subjects of this, of this, uh, of this film and... Uh, they are less comfortable than, than the people abroad. Because 
because they they feel that there is something you know really happy about 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 uh, about the society i guess i guess in a in a sense do they do they feel like the the the, the picture that you've portrayed of them is is unfair or is not very realistic is that is that kind of one of their criticisms no i don't think that they think that it is unfair but that it that it uh, it brings uh, serious even on the humanistic way but it 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 it, it brings serious uh, subjects and uh, um already the subject is difficult you know that there is the murder of the father there is you know a lot, a lot of difficult stuff, uh, and I think that 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 Czech people would love, uh, you know, for example, some Cohen Brothers films or some very very um, rough films when it is abroad. But as this film is really closed and it was shot mm. here, they are not used to, uh, to it because Czech re- there is a strong um, tradition of. Um, uh, you know, nice film ah. about society, not so criti- so critical. So I think that that the difference between the people in Berlin and Paris and Paris and here is that the Czech people love also thrillers and all kind of difficult films. But if it, if it is the scene through another filter, but when right. the film is concerning Czech Republic and Czech people. It is a different story. You, you right. understand what I mean? No, I, I think I totally understand. Like, sh- shine the light in the darkness somewhere else, but but exactly. But yeah. but don't but don't shine it on us. Well, I think I think yeah. Peter, there there's something for me. I I've, I've studied philosophy for many years and and consider myself uh, a bit of an existentialist. I think more more than a bit of an existentialist. And I think there's something mm-hmm. for me in your film very appealing in the sense that, uh, you know, that I mean, even from the title alone, the irony of the title "We Are Never Alone" to me is 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 a question, but it's also a statement. I mean, I'm not sure if you 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 were purposefully mm-hmm. going for the irony, or if it was like, hang on, guys, we actually are never alone, and we do have these relationships and these humans and these people and these children and these lovers around us who actually can help us walk through, you know, the difficulty, the despair, the contradiction of, you know, what it means to be human. Yeah, this is the subject of the film, the fact that we are never alone because we act uh, against with uh, other people, for other people, against other people, and hate and love, but we are still uh, somebody. For, yeah, for, for me, I... I and we uh, are not also... The, we, we are not the same person like my uh, my heroes in the film. They, she will not be the same as the bouncer, and she will not be the same as the, with the neighbor. She will not be the same uh, girl with, with her husband. You, know? you are in front of, of different people, and you, thanks to that, you also are different. And the film wants to speak about uh, also about the loneliness, because mm, we speak usually about loneliness like uh, something negative, but there is also a positive uh, way to be alone, because it is very constructive, and we can see it also with, with the people in the film. The boy, for example, the person who is able to to be to be alone, is also able to construct himself. Well, and and even in the in in the clo- in the lose lost be right. The clo- the closing scene of the yeah. film. You mean the boy at the closing scene of the film, looking out over the city, over the village, over the water, you know, wearing a backpack. It's as if he is the one who is about to go and and build and construct his life in in almost a new way. It seems to exactly. me exactly. You know, there, there's something. I mean, it's interesting that Czechoslovakians uh, have have criticized the film in that sense. I, I I think I totally understand why, and yet at the same time, for me, uh, these themes of you know despair and fear and and suicide, broken relationships. I mean, this this is the human condition. <laughs> we we are all. Yeah, connected. that's what I think. I, I was I was surprised. For me, I didn't want to be. Uh, you know, it is not a social film. It is not about society. It is also because the film is settled in a real, in a real country, in a, in a real period. But
but uh, yeah, I was under. Uh, I am infested by other things, by all these existential um, side of, of 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 the story, more than by 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 the fact that it is settled in Czech, Czech Republic in in 2014. So it's the it's sort of the underlying philosophical and, and relational tone that's so important for you. It's not so much the setting. Exactly, yeah. There's a scene, uh, Peter, in the film where Silva is is uh, in her sort of drunken state. I am uh, wondering if she was going to drive off the road and we were going to have a car accident, but she ends up at the prison and, you know, in her drunken yeah. state and yet very aware, it seems to me, shouting, you know, to her husband or to her lover or to the father of her child. And the scene of the wall and in the black and white and the barbed wire, I mean, I, 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 it almost brought a tear to my eye in the sense that, uh, you know, aren't we all in some way, you know, um, in, in a position like this of one kind or another? You know, you know, up, up, against, up against a wall of a particular sort. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, yes, exactly. And uh, and is that yeah, and, and is that I kind of is that kind of what you, is that, is that kind of what you were doing with the black and white versus the color as well? I mean, the, the I mean, life is rarely, it seems to me, black and white, and so at these arbitrary moments, the the the, the that shifts. I mean, and again, to me, that is what life is all about. Yes, and also I wanted. To you know, I was also interested by the fact how the world looks differently in the, in the colors and in, uh, in black and, uh, and in, in black and white. So also, I wanted to have two two dimensions. You know. uh, well, then, and so somehow I I it. it wasn't really calculated by by reason. Of course, the reason right. is that when she she decided to, to, to go to, to see her love, you know, the, the first part in, in in colors. But it is not only that. It is also I wanted really. I was really interested by this uh, metamorphosis of the people and of the world. Um, you know, in, in black and white and in, in color and about all these moods. Uh, I don't know. Also about the sense of sensitivity. It is not, not only a rational, uh, rational um, decision. Like for example, in a historical film, we will be, be in black and white because we are settled in forties. You understand what I mean? That it, it, I, I want to. I want it even with black and white. I want it to be a little bit irrational. Mm. Do you no, no, it is not good. Yeah, P Peter, would you say that um, are you kind of driven by questions uh, of of not only your own existence but just our existence as a whole, humans? You know, why why are we here? I mean, the prison, the character who plays the prison guard near the beginning of the film, you know kind of yeah. talking about the past, what it was like under communist rule, and and he said something to the effect of, you know, we knew we were Czechs. Um, but but now but now what are we, you know? And I mean, in in today's current political climate, when you look around the world, whether it's the U.S. or or the Middle East, I mean, it just kind of you know, I was I was recently in Southeast Asia, and and there are significant issues, as you know, in Thailand and Cambodia and so on, and Indonesia with, you know, are, aren't we all kind of in the same boat? I think. I think so, and I wanted to speak about it because, especially now, you know, um, all this uh, discussion about identity here by uh, uh, in, in Czech Republic, this is a big issue. But identity, you know, all this uh, revival, proto fascist revival, we can see here in France. We had this discussion about identity national, and you know. Um, in politics, now it's a very fashionable uh, speaking about identity, about who we are, and about uh, you know all these um, 
dangerous strangers and immigrants. So, um, and I think that it doesn't concern only Czech Republic or uh, Europe. But I, I think that maybe we are really going to the some very dark period. So, in a in a sense, Peter, for you, is is a story like this? I mean, I know having having studied existentialism and read, uh, you know, you could pick any of of Camus' novels, for instance. I mean, you know, the plague. I mean, pretty bleak, very not uh, yeah. uh, not not very hopeful on the surface, and yet when you peel back. Um, some of the narrative and some of what's actually going on really isn't isn't there this sense of of hope isn't there this sense of 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 uh, a longing for what's next for me uh, there, there is a sense of hope because i uh, i am not afraid about dark side of uh, to to think about dark side or to to describe the dark side of uh, of humanity of our souls because um, I think that since uh, still I, I, I'm looking for, for a hope and uh, personally personally I, I see the world like uh, we have a lot of problems and uh, I can be passionate that somehow uh, in the deepest uh, level uh, I, I'm, I, I'm very, very optimistic and uh, even for, for my characters, I think that they go somewhere, and uh, not everybody, but the children, I, I think that they have, uh, we have to hope for them. Do you, you think? Do you, you know, right, at, right in the early, early part of the film, I think the, uh, the, um, uh, I can't remember. Uh, well, in fact, the names of people in the film are very. Other than Silva, I'm not sure that names in the film are actual, uh, actually. Because they don't. They don't. They don't have really names. Oh, okay. They don't have them. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what I wanted. I wanted to make them, uh, you know, kind of like kind of um, people without a name. Pe people, people without a name. And and uh, is it is it is it Carl's Car Roden's wife's character who says to him? Doesn't she say something to the effect of those of who are afraid to live, or sorry, those who are afraid to die, or are, are actually af in fact afraid to live? Yeah, and she says that because he, he is a hypochondriac and he is all, all the time he's afraid to die, and she says who is afraid to to die is afraid to live. And that, and that is, in a sense, to me, anyway, to me, that is the sort of one of the major, the major themes of of the film. And so, when you when you end on what I thought was a very hopeful note of the young boy looking out into the harbor with the backpack on, and and you know, in a, in a sense, uh, the, the road movie now begins. You know, that 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 that's good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what's 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 part two of We Are Never Alone? Well, I think that this film somehow it is. I don't know. I, I think for the first time now we are speaking, but maybe uh, somehow there are some. There's something about Mora Kredi by Stalin. No, Mora Kredi uh, of Stalin because uh, you know all this uh, story of the boy who who was going to such incredible places and. Uh, all sort of difficulties, but but somehow the the, the life is strong, uh, stronger than uh, than uh, all these problems. No. Yes. Did well, you think to to this book or not? No, I absolutely. Is I that mean, on credit. For for me, one of the one of the really pivotal and most beautiful moments in the film for me was uh, right after the the older boy, the teenage boy, um, uh, accidentally kills. I guess his grandfather. I think. Um, and mm -hmm. the young boy uh, runs through, the, opens the gate, and and almost sort of descend descends into darkness, and and runs into the and it's really quite lovely the way the way the, the way that you filmed it and framed it and just kind of disappears into the darkness. But that to me, again, once again, we're back to sort of modern existentialism, I suppose you could say. That is, we have to step into it. We step into it, and it's only then that you know that that. You know that discovery really can take place. It, it seems to me. Mm -hmm. 
It's about it really your film for me, Peter, really comes down to it's it's highly relational film. Sure, it's it's dark and it, it there is a uh, um, a despair uh, like quality to to the film itself, to the tone, to the music, to the the the, the photography, and so on. But ultimately, I too, I'm with you. Uh, for me, it is about hope. It is. I'm. <laughs> I've I've been accused of being a little negative before, but sometimes I, I I think I think it really is just about being realistic and not you know as a as a as an existentialist might say, don't run away from it, run into it. And I think that's kind of what you're saying with the film. Yes, but you are not a good representative of of a normal public or a distributor. No? Sorry, say, say that again? That you are not a distributor or you are not, you know, a sale agent. <laughs> right. Is that, is, are you wishing that I was a, di- a distributor? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I think that we are speaking about it, but the, the, the scale that the film is already always seen like something uh, powerful but difficult to yeah. difficult yeah. No? yeah oh for without a doubt and i think that to some degree to me is kind of um the the conclusion almost of what you're actually trying to do that that in a sense is is what you're trying to break through the fact that most folks i suppose would see this you know in that in that light is a, uh, um to me, the the sense in which people are unwilling to 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 sort of descend into that darkness, if if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you are you going to be coming to Toronto for the uh, screening? Yes. You are gonna you are gonna be here, and uh, you're gonna be here for. Uh, I'll be there. I will. I. I will go there to on the 7th of September, so I will be there since the first day. So you're, com- you're coming in sometime next week. Well, uh, Peter, I just I do uh, wanted to say thank you for for taking time to to chat with me uh, today, and and congratulations on your film and and for it uh, premiering uh, at, at TIFF. At certainly, uh, it's the North American premiere, my understanding. I don't know any idea. <laughs> you just made the film, right, Peter? Yes. Well, well, we will show it in Toronto. What will happen after we? I, I don't really know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I Toronto audience. And I is... really thank you for the interview. I'm very sorry because I, I, I could speak with French with you, but uh, in English, I, I, I can't really express myself well. So uh, I'm really, really frustrated for myself and for you. No, I think it's been it's been wonderful, and we're we're going to do our. It should be taped. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really appreciate the time, and we're going to uh, we do our best to to get the interview out there as much as we can, and generate a little bit of interest for your film. And and again, thank you for your time and for the film, and and I look forward to seeing it uh, get out there in, in a variety of different venues. Okay. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, David. Thanks, Thanks. Peter. Thanks.